the baffle kit. <clears throat> I've been working on this for a while, off and on, in the little bit of time I've had to work. Seems like it's a thing where the more people I talk to, the more they talk about how frustrating it is, and some people seem to think it's fun. I'm actually finding it a little bit fun, while frustrating at the same time. <clears throat> the, uh, forgive the mess in here, but the... Plans pages uh, have a great detail with some key things left out or presented in a way that's, I mean, honestly, it's just kind of awkward and hard to figure out. Anyway, so I'm working on the baffle kit, and I had an idea. And I went over to Harbor Freight, and I bought some little two, three dollar inspection mirrors, and I took the mirrors off. And I actually had two baffle kits. I have this one what we'll call the modern baffle kit, as well as another one over here, which is what I'll call the old baffle kit. So when I bought the kit from a friend, from my friend Jim, it came with this old RV6, circa RV6 era original baffle kit. Uh, with Since then, the instructions have definitely improved and the kit itself has got, uh, uh, it's just, Got more engineering pre-work into it and, and is um, a little more exact. So uh, anyway, I took the old baffle kit material from the, well, I'll just call the old school kit, and I chopped it really, really low. Uh, I got some aluminum tape and some of these things, these little telescoping rods. It's basically like a little antenna, in this case, used to make uh, little inspection mirrors. And I built these, I cut down on both sides, trimmed it all out. Airplane sounds. And then uh, basically built templates. So using the holes where the screws go in on each of these cylinders, and then also not on here right now, but across the back, similarly, chop down to where you can use these certain points as reference. The idea then is that you pick these guys up like this, put the cowling down on them, and when the cowling comes down, it shoves them down, and they will come down to the point where the cowling actually sits. So they will show you a height along this plane here. So you get a general line, at least a picture of the curve of where the cowling actually sits above the baffle template. The idea then is that you can take these off and then line the screw holes up and align them. And then these points that are created by these guys will show you where the cowling sits above those. Take these and lay them, overlay them on top of the actual pieces that you're going to use on the engine, mark those, and it gives you a scribe line reference from which you can make that first big cut. So I've only done, I've never done this before, so this is the first time, but I can see, and people certainly say that it's frustrating getting down to that first, basically to the point where you can do fine tuning. People do a lot of fine tuning, chopping off a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, because they're afraid they're going to take off too much. I mean, these pieces don't cost that much, right? But... What I figured was if there's a way to save a little bit of time to put this all together and uh, have a way of using this on a four-cylinder Lycoming, right, or in this case on a, on a parallel valve, and then, uh, and then be able to use it sort of as a tool to be able to transfer those lines. One of the interesting things about the cowling fit and the way the engine mount works is that the relative distance between the, uh, the cowling and you kind of see uh, one knuckle right there between the number four cylinder and the edge of the cowling and about a knuckle and a half between the number two cylinder and the edge of the cowling here, the way that works. Come over to this side and we're talking two and a half knuckles to the number or 
two full, two and a quarter knuckles really, to the number three cylinder, and two full knuckles over to the number one cylinder. So you're, we're talking like a extra three quarters of an inch or so at least in there. But that's because if you're standing at the center of the airplane here, and you look at it, when you line everything up, the engine actually sits the back part of the engine mount, instead of being in the center, it's actually offset just a little bit. So the whole engine on the back end is shifted that way, but here on the front end, it lines up exactly in the center. So what that means is that you get a shifting from if everything was centered, it would be even on both sides, but here it shifts off and it does this. So instead of sitting like that, is actually sitting like that on the engine mount. The engine mount is offset. You can see more firewall on this side than you can see on that side. Let's start with this temporary baffling strap that in. Pull these things way up here. Obviously, they don't need to be nearly that big. big. Let's push them down a little ways. where we know they're high enough. Keeping in mind, this is just giving us a kind of an approximation. Type of measurement. So we just want to be high enough to where we know we're higher than it will sit. And then we'll be able to drop that cowling top half on there and push it down and look inside and triple check and double check and look and see. Okay, so I haven't been put the side rods in. Not that critical right now. But let's see if we can get a view of what we're looking for. There's one of them. There's another one. And then the others I just had to kind of feel back in here for. And you can see a couple of these. Let me see if I can get this one. Carefully, there it is. You can see the one in the back, right against the top of that one, and then felt for the front too. On this side, there's one. There's one. The back one is so low. Oh, there it is. Way back there. And then I had to feel for this one here, but there you go. You can see what it's doing. The idea is just get all of this pulled down nice and tight. Get that first cut mark going. Of course, you gotta have, I mean, your, this has to all be fitted already. And firewall is pulled up and it fitted in here, so I can actually place this back right now. The idea is to get a, to get a good fit. If anything, you'd want it to be sitting a teeny tiny bit high rather than too low. That's why it's important to reach in and uh, you know, find these things and verify that they're all the way up against the top. Important to do, probably before you, before you remove them for sure. So what's interesting is, so on this side, remember, we're much closer to the edge of the cowling on this side. You can see how it really swoops in there. This engine is offset in this direction. So if I go relative to the cowling, you can kind of see the fit there. Now, the other side, the metal is cut down a little bit lower. They're not even. Um, 
also. So the metal on the other side actually comes up a little bit higher. But still, you can see where there's an additional, there's probably an additional inch on this side because it's so much further that direction. That cowling is on the far side is coming up. Once it gets heat, you know, this far in, it's really starting to come over. Uh, so that it raises up a lot and then comes over this direction. Again, you can see just the, I mean, that's three finger widths right there on that back cylinder. And it's one and a half. It's not even the same fingers. I have to use the same fingers. Yeah, it's about one and a half finger width. So just to, in the official, you know, finger width measurement from the Dark Ages. Anyway, you get kind of an idea. So now we have a very basic first cut line. You can use these screw reference holes here, right? As well as the notches that are in the, uh, the fold notches on the bottom edge of the front. Baffles is a great uh, reference point right there. And there's another one over here. As a reference. Anyway, use these reference points here to do templates. So the plan now is going to be to take this template that we use, measuring template or tool or whatever you want to call it, and to overlay the holes. So this hole will line up with that. This hole here will line up with this one. And in addition, because I match drilled it, this hole will line up with the one underneath it. There. So the idea then is you can get pretty darn precise. Once that's been done, everything's lined up, you can use these points here to mark starting location between for a line. Now, in this particular case, we also have this guy here. Charlie's going to line up. Put them together and just run the, run the screws through. Get it that way. This is the one that actually goes back here, relative speaking. <clears throat> you set those up. You can see that that line might be a little mark right there, a little sharpie. Alright, so <clears throat> the idea being that if we line everything up, then reference. And we're being approximate here. I mean, we want to be close, as close as we can reasonably be, but you know, it's not exactly rocket science here. Some draw a basic line 